Everyone got a lawnmower. What for? Me? Alright, I'm probably gonna say something that might be a bit surprising, but Over the Hedge is in my top 5 favorite DreamWorks movies. Does it have problems? Absolutely, and there are obviously better films DreamWorks have done, but I don't care, this movie is fun. I love the energy, the jokes are so funny. For a 2006 film, it still looks really good today, and that soundtrack, oh, it's so good. I still love this film. It's far from perfect, but I don't care. It's such a fun movie. I'm kind of disappointed though it never got a true film sequel, because there's a lot you can do with a follow-up with these characters. However, while a sequel to Over the Hedge is very unlikely to ever happen, what if I told you that not one, but two sequels to this film already exist? Yep, Over the Hedge got two follow-ups in video game form. The first being the console game just simply called Over the Hedge, and a PSP game called Hammy Goes Nuts. I'm gonna start with the console game first since this one is actually pretty special to me because it's the DreamWorks game I grew up with. Yeah, of all the DreamWorks games I'm covering, this is the one I have the most experience with. I first played it on PC back then, though unfortunately I lost that copy and had to re-get it on the GameCube not too long after, which I played way more of. Everything was just hitting the right notes for me. I think it might have been one of my most played GameCube games when I was little. Now unless you want to count Trek Smash and Crash Racing, which did come out after this, or any of the PS2 ports of the later DreamWorks games, this is the last main DreamWorks game to be released only on the 6th generation of consoles. Yep, the last one on the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox generation. It did also get a GBA and DS game, though I'll save those games for another time. In terms of which version I'm covering for this video, while I did grow up with it on GameCube, I'm gonna be playing the Xbox version on the 360 for better video footage. And before anyone asks, I didn't have any issues with playing that on the 360. It looked and played perfectly fine. Oh yeah, Edge of Reality from the Shark Tale game returned for this. I didn't mention this in the Shark Tale video, but I really like their little logo intro here. I'm always a big fan of when developers have fun with their little logo intro. So this game starts with the very end of the film. If you've seen the movie, you know how it all plays out. A year has passed and unfortunately Unfortunately, the log where all the food they got was completely trashed by the Verminator. The game basically has to rebuild what they've lost by doing heists while also fighting against the Verminator and his army of controlled animals. That's pretty much it for like 80% of the game. Until like the last couple levels where you gotta rescue Heather from the Verminator. Otherwise, there isn't much of a big story here, it's pretty straightforward. But that's fine though, I don't think it need to be this grand story, it's over the hedge, it wasn't a very deep film to begin with. I enjoy this story though, it's nothing amazing but it's pretty neat. The character interactions are pretty good too. Not hilarious, in fact, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't laugh at any of the jokes, aside from the unintentional stuff. But at the very least, it was very charming. Like many other DreamWorks games, most of the actors from the movie aren't here, but I gotta say, these replacements are spot on. Like, seriously, big props to the replacement actors here. Like, I didn't even know it wasn't the original actors until I saw the credits. That's how good they were. The game looks alright. It's better than the Madagascar game, but I still think Shrek 2 and Shark Tale looked a lot better than this. The character models, animation environments look okay enough. Not great, but... Not terrible looking either. The soundtrack is great stuff though. It's just really catchy and they fit the levels so well. Also, shout out to the music that plays in the main hub. It's so good. So this is a beat em up platformer of sorts. You pick two characters of the four you got between either RJ, Vern, Hammy, or Stella. Aside from like one special move they each got and the different dialogue you get with them depending on which pair you have, which is a really nice touch by the way, they all play pretty much the same, so it's all up to preference on who you want to choose after the first couple levels. I mostly stuck with RJ and Vern for my playthrough since, well they are my favorite characters from the movie, and come on look at that icon for Vern up there. He looks like he's been places. So like I said, it's part beat-em-up and part platformer. The beat-em-up stuff is pretty simple and it's not very in-depth. You basically just mash the attack button over and over with maybe occasionally shooting a projectile at enemies in the air. You do get a couple of new combos later on and even a health bar increase, but that's pretty much it. But here's the thing, it may not be very in-depth, 
but it's still a pretty fun combat system. Wherever you hit an enemy, the impact feels so good, and the sound effects when you hit an enemy really enhance this frantic fight going on. I really like that. It's just a very exciting combat system. Yes, I do wish it was a bit deeper, but for what it is, for a very simple combat system, I think it pulls it off pretty well. It also helps that the enemy variety is really good. Since you're fighting mostly controlled wild animals, you fight rats, gophers, rabbits, weasels, bears, armadillos, and heck, even some machinery. It's a lot of variety. I really dig that. Outside of the combat, there is also some stealth in this game, but it's pretty minimal. Like, the only stealth you'll be doing is just avoiding a couple lasers and these detectors on the floor. It's really easy, and they don't even show up that much in the game. I wish there was a bigger emphasis on the stealth in this game. I mean, you're doing big heists throughout it. Some more interesting stealth sections would have been nice. I will say though, I really like the level design. A lot of varied locations that each offer something different. There's even some locations outside the suburbs you go to, like this train that leads to a shooting gallery and this amusement park. And then later on, you actually go to the amusement park itself and go across these roller coaster tracks. Then there are also these mountain caves that probably have the most platforming to do in the game. And then finally, you go to Verntech itself near the very end, which is definitely the hardest part of the whole game. The bosses are pretty cool too. Not a ton of them, but they were pretty solid. I especially like the final boss in particular. That was a pretty fun fight. Sometimes the stages will also have a recurring thing to them, like this button pressing minigame with Hammy, grabbing the, all the food in the allotted time, or escorting Ozzy and the wagon at the end of a heist. I like these. They're all pretty easy, even the escort missions, but I enjoyed these little recurring sections. In fact, all these levels were just really fun. There wasn't a single stage in the game where I wasn't enjoying myself. No, they were all pretty solid. It helps that the game has a good difficulty balance. It's not hard, but it definitely ramps up the difficulty near the end of the game, especially when you get to Verntech, the amusement park, and the one stage when you're protecting the hedge. Speaking of the hedge, I love this little hub. As you progress through the game, it will continue to grow the more food and stuff you find. It's such a cool detail, and heck, you can even hear what some of the NPCs are saying, and it changes every time you finish a big heist. I absolutely love details like that. Also, shoutouts to the projector you find that shows both the Shark Tale and Madagascar game, plus Shrek Super Slam. I should probably talk about that game someday. Also, throughout the stages, there are some hidden collectibles you can find that unlock a bunch of bonus extras, including the original Over the Hedge comic strip that the movie was based on. That's really neat. There's also some side mini games you could do like the bumper cars and RC racing which are pretty fun. Although funny thing, while I was recording one of the RC car courses, for some reason as soon as I was in first place, for a split second it counted me in last place right as I crossed the line and it counted me as finishing in last place and not first place. That was really funny. But yeah, that's really the whole game. I know it seems like I'm just skimming through what the game offers, but honestly I don't really have have anything super massive to say about it. It's just a really fun game. I still love it. It definitely has its issues. The partner AI can be pretty dumb. I do think the game should have been a bit longer. The combat, while I enjoy it overall, it could have been a lot deeper, and the stealth should have been a bit more interesting. Plus, I'll be 100% honest, as much as I love this game, it's not really gonna blow your mind. But still, it's just a fun time from beginning to end. There was never a moment in this game where I was like, man, I hate this section, or wow, this was a part of a game I wasn't looking forward to. No, I had a great time playing through it, which is something I couldn't say for any of the other DreamWorks games I've talked about so far, even the ones I did really like. But before I get into the conclusion, we gotta talk about the other game I wanted to go into in this video that I don't think most people really know about. Hammy Goes Nuts for the PSP. Now, I know I said I wouldn't cover any handheld games or spin-offs during my first visit with DreamWorks games, but this one in particular is just so unique for what it is that I really want to talk about it in this video. I know there is also a Game Boy Advance and DS game, but I will save those for another time. I just want to focus on the PSP game for now. This game was developed by Amaze Entertainment, who we've seen do the PC versions of Shrek 2 and Shark Tale. Now, I never played this game before, I didn't even know it existed on PSP, I barely know anyone who played it. 
I saw an advertisement for the DS and Game Boy Advance games when I was very little, but that was about it. Otherwise, I have no history with this game, so this is going to be my first time playing through it. So the story for this game is set after the events of the movie, and I suppose after the console game story too? I don't know, I couldn't really tell if it was or not. But basically, Hammy's TV was shut off after the neighbor he was stealing it from replaced it with a satellite dish. They turn to a new character they meet named Boris, who agrees to help with Hammy's predicament, but plot twist, Boris is a bad guy and his secret project has been to build a dam that would flood the forest. So they defeat Boris, destroy the dam, and Hammy gets his satellite dish to watch TV. It's a very simple story like the console game, but once again, I do like the dialogue here. I didn't find a lot of it funny, but it was very charming. Plus, like the console game, the voice acting is top notch. They still do a pretty good job here. The cutscenes are really odd though. You see, there is only two in-game cutscenes in the whole game. One at the beginning and one at the very end. Every other cutscene is in this weird panel format, which I'm assuming is trying to replicate the original comic strip, but it just looks really weird. I don't know, it just looks kind of off. So... Before I get into the presentation, keep in mind this is a PSP game. It's basically a weaker PS2. It's really more meant to be on the little screen than blown up on a TV like this for a YouTube video. So just keep in mind that the game looks way better being played on an actual PSP than blown up like this for a video. And in terms of how it looks for a PSP game, the models, environments, and animations? It's okay. It gets the job done just fine. The music is pretty much the same as the console version, so obviously it's really good. There are a couple of unique tracks for this game, and they're pretty nice too. I especially really like the remixed menu theme. It's so good. But a weird thing that happened to me quite a bit is that sometimes the music wouldn't play for me and it would just be in plain silence. I don't know if it's just my copy of the game, but it was very weird when this was happening. So, if the console game was more about the combat and less on the platforming, Hammy Goes Nuts is the complete opposite, where it's way more focused on the platforming than on the combat. You only have RJ, Vern, and Hammy to play as for this game, and they each have their own stages to do. Yeah, they're predetermined, you can't just play as whoever you want like the console game. But the thing is, each character is pretty unique from each other. Hammy has this speed soda he can drink to slow down everything around him, Vern can break down walls and RJ can swing on other poles. I really like that they gave each character something unique and built the stages around them. That's pretty cool. But unfortunately, the game doesn't feel that great to play. The controls are passable at best, but they don't feel very good. Like, it's not unplayable, but definitely felt pretty stiff, especially just moving around. The platforming is generally okay. It does ramp up near the end, so that's nice. Like the console game, the objectives in the stages usually also have you get as much food as possible. I will say I do prefer the food grabbing compared to the console version since in this game you can carry more food at once. That's really nice. But these levels just don't really stick out to me. They weren't bad, but they weren't that interesting. The only ones I did like slash found somewhat interesting were the supermarket and the beaver dam, but that's all that really sticks out to me. Again, none of these levels were awful, but just not that interesting. The combat, I'm not really a big fan of. I get that it's more focused on the platforming, but if you thought the combat and the console versions were really simple, oh man, this is even simpler. You have one attack button and that's pretty much it. It's not exciting, it's not frantic, it's so boring and just not very fun. I guess the enemy variety is kinda neat. You fight rats, cats, these hamsters, and finally the beavers near the end of the game, so that's kind of cool. Otherwise, this combat system is so bland. Again, not awful per se, but I wouldn't call it fun. But I would be fine with all that if this camera wasn't such a terrible hindrance. I'm not kidding when I say this, this might be one of the worst and most jittery cameras 
I've ever seen for a game. So many times it gets stuck in place and I have no idea where to go. Or even worse, it starts jittering all over the place and making me extremely dizzy. And since this game is much more focused on the platforming, not to mention a lot more enclosed spaces you travel through, that means lots of unfair deaths just because of how terrible the camera system really is. Just awful all around. Well, on a more positive note, you can find these collectible acorns to unlock some bonus stuff like the comic strip, stills from the movie, and even some backgrounds and music that, no kidding, you can actually download to your PSP. That's actually really cool. There is also a multiplayer mode, but unfortunately I can't really test that out. I don't even know what it even entails since I can't really find that much about it online. But it exists, I guess. Maybe it was pretty fun. I don't know. If you've played it, let me know in the comments below. The game is pretty short too. I'd say you can beat it in like two to three hours. But yeah, Hammy goes nuts for the PSP. It's a game that exists. I didn't really enjoy this one. Did I hate it? No, but I wasn't really a big fan of it either. But to quickly get into the conclusion, the console game I absolutely would recommend playing. It's a really fun game that fans of DreamWorks movies and just fans of video games in general will really enjoy. Good story, great dialogue, fun combat, some pretty interesting levels, and just a really satisfying experience to play. It's definitely my favorite DreamWorks game I've played so far. I can't recommend it enough. Hammy Goes Nuts on PSP though, I don't think I can recommend this one. I do like the story and dialogue here, plus I did enjoy a few of the platforming. I also do think the food grabbing is a lot better here, but I don't know. I just don't really like how the game feels, the combat is weak, the levels are just kind of there, and this camera, I can't stress this enough, is horrible. It gets in the way of everything you do in this game. If you're a really big fan of Over the Hedge, then maybe you'll find stuff to like about it. Otherwise, you can definitely skip on this one. It's not very good. I will say, it's really cool to see two sequels to Over the Hedge even exist at all. This is a movie that is probably never getting a proper film sequel, so it's really nice to see what could have been if it did via these two video games. Even for something like Hammy Goes Nuts on PSP, as much as I don't like it, I still think it's cool it even exists at all. But now that we're leaving the sixth generation of DreamWorks games, well, at least for now, the next DreamWorks game we'll be looking at is the first game during the seventh generation of consoles, and our return to the Shrek series with Shrek the Third. Hope you all look forward to that one. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Plus, let me know down below if you played any of the Over the Hedge games. I'm curious to see if any of you remember these games. I hope you all have an amazing day, and take care. Bye! Thank you.